You gotta repent, sir, for murdering babies. Why? Because it's a sin before God. <sighs> Why? Well. <sighs> Stinky breath. Yeah, Why? that's pretty that's pretty evil of you, sir. Yeah, I am. And then I hope and pray that you Yeah. Ha! <laughs> well, that's what you do to babies, huh? Yeah, I love it. You love it, huh? Yeah, I do. Okay. I hope that you come to Christ, sir. Oh, I'd never go to Christ. I hope that you come to Christ. No, sir. I don't go to Christ. Yeah, you. I you, don't listen to Christ. You, you will have a darkened heart, sir. I do have a darkened yeah. heart. Yeah. You have a darkened heart. I do. I do very, very much. And so. you will stand yeah. before God in judgment. Yes, day I will. Day. Every day. You will stand before God in judgment. Yes, I will. Every day. All of the babies that I you love have it. Killed. I love it. Yeah, keep tearing the babies. Yeah, apart. I will. Keep tearing the babies. I apart. will. Keep keep tearing the babies what? apart. Yeah, sir. The babies, their blood streams from the ground. Their blood screams from the crown. You are a murderer, sir. You are a murderer. As the Donald Trump rally got underway this weekend at the Treasure Island Hotel and Casino, a young man approached a police officer stationed at the event and asked for an autograph. Then, without warning, the man went for the officer's gun, trying to take it away, only to be quickly subdued. Authorities now say that Michael Sanford, 19, allegedly told the Secret Service that this was an attempt to kill Trump. A complaint obtained by ABC News claims Sanford, who has a British driver's license, had been planning to assassinate Trump for about a year. He allegedly told the Secret Service he had driven from California to Las Vegas on June 16th to kill Trump after seeing news reports that the candidate would be there. A day later, he went to a Vegas gun range to learn how to shoot. It's the latest security scare involving Trump, who also had a man try to rush the stage of an Ohio rally in March. ISIS propaganda videos like this one show men accused of having sex with other men executed in typically barbaric fashion. And it's not just under ISIS that gay and lesbian people face the death penalty. Same-sex sexual relations are illegal in more than 70 countries, but only in seven predominantly Muslim states can you be sentenced to death for it. Ramtin Ebrahimipour told us he fled Iran last year after spending three months in prison for handing out leaflets against homophobia. They beat me. They tried to suffocate me with a pillow and they stuck their shoes in my mouth, he said. Not all Muslim societies are intolerant of homosexuality. Here in Turkey, which is majority Muslim, gay sex was legalized in 1858. That's nearly 150 years before it finally became legal in all American states. Their sign said our anger has reached its limit. Marines out. And they made sure nothing was lost in translation. We have been enduring cruel treatment for 70 years. The demands are decades old, but the recent rape and murder of a 20-year-old woman has renewed fury. What happened to her could have happened to me, said the student activist. Ex-Marine Kenneth Shinzato, a civilian base worker, is a prime suspect. He's been charged with abandoning the body in this park and is awaiting other charges. We're, we're all equally horrified. Lieutenant General Lawrence Nicholson is the top U.S. military official on the island. After the death, he instituted a 30-day mourning period, banning off-base drinking and celebrations. We live in your towns and villages. We're to emphasize unity, the bases here are distributing this outreach video. If I may, all the outreach in the world isn't going to bring back the life of this woman who was killed. Horrible. Or console her family. Terrible. We are responsible. I am responsible. All I can tell you is we're doing everything we can to ensure that there's not another event. We have 50,000 Americans here every day working and well representing our nation. A very disturbing investigation this morning in Pennsylvania after 12 Amish girls were found at a home outside of Philadelphia. They were likely living in the basement of this house in Feasterville. They range from 18 years old to just six months. The homeowner, Lee Kaplan, is facing multiple charges, including statutory sexual assault. The secluded White House is where 51-year-old Lee Kaplan allegedly kept 12 Amish girls. I have three kids, and it's just so upsetting to know that there were so many girls. We've seen them. They watch us while our kids play in the backyard. 
The oldest of the girls is 18. Police believe her parents, Daniel and Sevilla Stotesfitz, gave her to Kaplan when she was 14 in exchange for help with their family's financial troubles. The woman now has two daughters, a six-month-old and a three-year-old. Kaplan is believed to be the father. According to our CBS station, KYW, Kaplan himself isn't Amish. Authorities arrested him Thursday after neighbor Jen Betts called child services. With his voice quivering and tears filling his eyes, Mustak Faisal said he had no choice but to leave Pakistan. My life is full of challenges. Muslim neighbors accused the young Christian of tearing pages from the Quran, so they wanted his family killed. I was so scared. I told them I would never do anything like that to their holy book, but they didn't believe me. Fearing for their lives, Faisal took his wife Samina, son Joshua, and fled to Thailand with hopes of starting a new life free from Islamic death threats. The moment we arrived in Thailand, I submitted our asylum application with the UN. But six months after arriving in country, Faisal still had not heard back from the UN's agency responsible for protecting refugees. And with the family's three-month tourist visa expired, the Thai government sent immigration police after them. I was not at home when the Thai police came to our apartment. My wife told them she was a heart patient and that they should not arrest her, but they didn't listen. Under Thai law, any refugee who overstays their tourist visa is illegally in country. The arrested, like Samina, are taken in caged vans to an immigration detention center, or IDC. She was okay for the first three days, but then she got very ill on December 20th. Faisal pleaded with the UN to help his sick wife. I kept asking, I kept crying, but they did not listen to me. He begged detention guards to give her heart medications. I told him that if you don't do anything, she will die. The name Jesus Christ. Wilson Chowdhury, a Christian human rights advocate, tried to intervene, but wasn't too hopeful based on past experience. And what we found is that uh, the wardens protecting, meant to be protecting these detainees, deny them access to health care and medicines. His group and others obtained images showing inhumane conditions inside the IDC facility, including of men chained like dogs. The stench as you walk in is overpowering. Um, the toilets, are, uh, uh, there are two toilets to serve over 200 people. And in some cases, 200 people crammed in rooms that barely fit 100. So they're sleeping one on top of each other, or they'll be sleeping crouching or standing up. On December 30th, 2015, the UN finally responded to Faisal, but with news that his wife Samina had died. My life is so terrible right now. We face so many difficulties in Pakistan, and that's why we escaped to Thailand. Now I'm here, and my wife is dead. What am I supposed to do? My son keeps asking, where is mommy? But I don't have the courage to tell him the truth. Six other Pakistani Christian refugees have died in Thai detention centers. More than 100,000 Pakistanis have fled their homeland because of rising Islamic violence. Reports say nearly 11,000 are in Thailand, many of them Christians. The problem is the government here doesn't want any refugees from anywhere. And since Thailand is not a signatory to a UN agreement on asylum seekers, folks like George Naz face a precarious future. We were treated as second-class citizens in Pakistan. Now we come here and we face similar conditions. Naz is a wanted man in Pakistan. In 2013, he was accused of blasphemy by an Islamic court, but escaped to Thailand. For now, he hides and waits and illegal, with no right to work, no access to schools or hospitals. I'm scared to go outside my building because the immigration police or army can arrest me at any moment. CBN News visited a housing complex in Bangkok where scores of Pakistani Christian families are crammed into small apartments, many living illegally. For example, 
We live in one room with four other families. Our kids cannot go to school because they are also considered illegal. So the whole day, we just sit at home. For a few hours on Sunday morning, a handful of Pakistani Christian families brave arrest to attend the secret church service. Stranded in Thailand for years, many here hope and pray for designated UN refugee status and eventually the chance to settle in a third country. In the meantime, a few Christian NGOs are helping them and others with food and living expenses. But the needs are overwhelming. For now, though, Paisal clings to the one thing he knows will bring comfort. He reads verses from Psalm 121, reminding his son Joshua that it is God who will take care of all their needs. I trust in God. Only God can help us in our time of difficulties. <laughs> 